Hello friends. Today we are here to talk about the Florentine stitch. The Florentine stitch is the stitch that you see the whole way down the side of my sewing box sampler number one. And today I am going to show you how to do this beautiful stitch. It is not a hard stitch, although I can understand that it does seem a little intimidating when you look at it. But I'm going to break it all down for you. I'm going to show you step by step. I'm going to talk about all kinds of tips and trips, tricks that you can use to do this stitch. And hopefully when we are done, I will have taken some of the, the intimidation away. And you will learn to enjoy this stitch as much as I do. And enjoy certainly the gorgeous... Um, look of it, the gorgeous patterns you can create. It is called, by several different names, Bargello and Gobelin are its most basic. I believe Gobelin, it might be the overarching name for these types of stitches. Gobelin, um, let's see, Bargello, Florentine or Florentine, Flame Stitch, Hungarian Stitch, all of these refer to the same kind of stepped down different patterns of stitches. I believe the different names come from different areas of the world where they were used, different eras where they were used, kind of different names got applied, but it's all the same basic stitch. Like I said, it's a stepped stitch. So, what I'm going to do is kind of talk through the different parts of it. And then I have a um, another piece of fabric here that we will actually do it. So I'm going to talk through it first and then I'm going to demonstrate. So as with any stitch, you are going to want to do lots of practice before you actually work on your your project itself. So I recommend that you get a um, piece of fabric and some floss. Get a bigger count of fabric so that you can see the holes well and you can be comfortable stitching on it. I recommend that you watch through this video once first and then maybe come back and practice with me as I work through it again. Uh, so you can kind of get a feel for where we're going first, and then you can actually be doing it yourself. So, one thing for those of you that have the chart, my sewing box sampler one, you will notice on the chart that I have a black box all around this section. That is simply to show the placement of these stitches. You will not be stitching that box. It is not a back stitch box. It's not guidelines. You do not stitch that at all. It is just to show you where to place these stitches. And as you can see, on all sides, the stitches for the Florentine stitch are one stitch away two linen threads, therefore, away from the stitches around it. Now, um, let me say at the beginning here that Florentine stitch is not appropriate for Ada. You do want to be working on some sort of even weave fabric for this. So as I was starting to stitch this, and really this was a learning process for me as I was stitching it as well, I found, and the colors are a little bit off here, but you have this triangle of ecru here. You have a row of light brown. It's looking kind of gray to me on the screen. A row of the, the dark blue, and then ecru, yellow, ecru, yellow, ecru, ecru, and then we repeat with the blue, the brown, and then the triangle of ecru. I found to start with that it was best to help me keep on track if I put in this row of the brown stitches first. Now I only worked, how I approached this is I worked one, one length of each of these colors at a time. 
So I put in this brown one, just one length of that, and then I came back and put in the blue one and one length of that, and then the ecru, ecru one length of that, and so on. And then I came back at any point once I had this the brown line in, I could come back and fill in these triangles with confidence that I would stay on track. I tried it once or twice without those brown guidelines and basically screwed it up. For whatever reason, <laughs> Counting is important in this. And um, for whatever reason, I ended up screwing up those, those triangles. So putting the brown line in first really helped me stay on track. Now, I'm looking over at my notes so I don't forget anything. So the basic stitch, and I know it's hard to see on this, and like I said, we will be doing it. This is a 46 count fabric that I did my model on. So we will be using a 32 count for the um for the mod or for the um the stitching to show you how to do it but for this each for the basic florentine stitch your each stitch goes over four strands four threads of the fabric each stitch so you stitch the first one and then you step down one down and two over so it's a step stitch that way, one down, two over, one down, two over, one down, two over. And again, when you get that brown row in, all the other ones are built off of that. And so it helps you to keep it all straight. And then this one's built up from it. In this particular pattern, there are nine stitches down and then you come back up eight stitches back up. And what I actually did was do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. That just, again, little tricks to help you keep on, on track. But it, remember that it's nine down, not eight back up or nine if you count the peak. So with most Florentine that you will see, it will be most often oriented this way with peaks and valleys. And the and let me back up for one second and say it doesn't matter if you start with this brown row or this brown row, if you start from the right or the left, totally doesn't matter, whatever you're comfortable with. I was comfortable starting over here because once I had these corner stitches in, I knew that that first stitch here was one in and one down from that row of gold stitches. So again, it helps with the placement. So as I said, most of the time you see the Florentine, the flame stitch, kind of with these peaks and valleys. And the way you form these stitches is something that, that a tip to remember is when you are heading up, towards the peak, so you're stitching this way, up, you come up in the top of the stitch and down in the bottom of the stitch. And then when you're heading back down, you come up in the bottom and down in the top. So heading up, you come up in the top, heading down, you come up in the bottom. And again, I will be showing you all of this just as clear as day when we get to actually stitching it. So, because ours is, of course, oriented horizontally, we have to change that to say, when we are heading over towards the right, we come up on the right side of the stitch and down in the left. And when we're heading back over to the left, we come up on the left side of the stitch and down in the right. And I will show you when I'm demonstrating how to do the stitch, where to make that change from coming up on the right to coming up on the left, because that's something to keep in mind, to, in, in mind too. And again, this sounds like, oh my God, how am I ever gonna remember all that? But I promise you, once you get the flow going and once you do a couple of these repeats, <laughs> it will be in your brain. All right, let me look at my notes. Okay, so as I said, this is a step stitch. Counting is your friend. 
it is over four stitches and then down one over two and you make the next one and again once you get that brown line set up the rest of it builds off of it and it's pretty clear I found that it was best if I worked each row consecutive row in order so again brown blue ecru yellow ecru yellow ecru and I did start a new strand for each of the ecrus and each of the yellows and each of the blues and each of the browns um don't jump and like think you're one you should do the ecru 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 and then come back in and fill in the yellow because especially on the 46 count it might be easier on the on the lower counts of fabric but and again these are all things I experienced so I am sharing with you my experience if you fill in some of the rows and then come back or if you do some of the rows and then come back to fill in what's in between it gets really hard especially like I said on higher counts of fabric it gets really hard to see where the holes are where you should be coming up and down and keeping track of your count it just was a whole lot better to have you know this side as I'm working starting over here and working to the right to have this fabric clear so I could see where I needed to come up up and down much easier than if I were trying to fill in in between so again start on either edge and work consecutively across okay so also don't feel like once you have started this big long section I'm not going to unroll this right now but like I said it goes down the whole side of the sampler do not feel you have to do it all at one time I basically worked a length of each color and then filled in the ecru and then I went and worked on another part of the sampler because it, it is a lot of stitching basically it's full coverage right so don't feel you have to like to do the whole thing or you'll lose track or get off track not at all just do a length and then skip to something else pick up a different piece to work on you know whatever don't overwhelm yourself um i do recommend whenever you're working with one strand now perhaps you are one of the people that cuts all of your floss the exact same length and you won't have this problem but what I found is I, these are this is Vicki Clayton's silk that I'm working with it comes off the spool so when I cut a length I don't measure I just kind of you know pull it out excuse me I just basically pull out a length and cut it I don't measure so not all of my lengths are necessarily the same length so I might be working the blue and I recommend when you're when you are stitching each section that you stop at the same point so say I'm working the blue and the blue takes me to here you know I've, I've done the brown the brown takes me to there so I end there with the blue I end there with the ecru and say I get to this yellow length and it's a lot longer well then I will just take it out of the needle I will still end there and I will pull that thread up through the fabric just over here on the margin and let it hang out until I am ready to continue that row or if I have a thread that is much shorter I will start a new length go as far as I had gone with the other ones and then pull the extra over here to the side of course you have to be careful that if you do have floss hanging over here on the side that if you work the rows next to it um, that you remember <laughs> that that floss is there and don't get it caught in those rows ask me how I know that one <laughs> yeah I've done all of the mistakes for you so you don't have to <laughs> okay let me look at my notes all right so the ecru sections the little triangles here because these are smaller like I said each line down for for all of these rows from brown to brown is nine down and then eight back up from the peak the ecru section is seven down because you're starting on 
a side of that brown one. So seven down, six back up, and then the rows get smaller as you fill in here, and then you have some compensating stitches. So I will be showing you how to do all of that, what, what order, what direction. I have shown the, the one, two, three, four, the order and the direction with arrows in the chart, but um, I believe that a picture is worth a thousand words. So doing the video is going to help a ton or, or watching the video is going to help a ton. So I'm going to roll this up and we are going to get started here. All right, so like I said, my fabric is 15 count, or 15 count. <laughs> I'm looking at the number of minutes that the video, the length of the video is now, and it's 15 minutes. <laughs> so that's where the 15 came from. I have um, some needles already threaded here. Now, with just random colors. Now, I am using actually, let me show this. This one is brown, and then I have... A blue and an ecru. Now the blue and the brown are actually Ginny Thompson's flower thread that I've had for ages and ages and the ecru is a pearl cotton, a, a size 12 pearl cotton. This of course is not the thread that you are going to be using for this design. I am using this because it's a little thicker, it shows well, um, I wanted something thick enough that I wouldn't have to mess with two strands on the 32 count fabric. I think for this stitch you may have to use two strands. I did have not tested that. Again, your coverage is, you know, whatever you're going to want it to be. All right, so we're just going to start here someplace and build that brown row. Now I like to, my way of starting if you've watched my basics of cross stitch video you've seen this and and this is kind of in a way waist knot but without the knot so you kind of have to be aware of where you're starting and holding make sure you don't pull the thread through but anyway all right so I'm just gonna go up here and my the purpose or the way my little away waist knot works here is that I cover that thread as I'm working down. So that's why it's kind of off to that slant, my step down. So, we are going over four linen threads. I have my little away waist thread here. I am gonna be working towards the right. So that means I come up on the right side of the stitch and down on the left side of the stitch and over four threads. So one, two, three, four, and down. And I do have this mounted on a little scroll frame and I'm holding it on my um, stand, which is the Hope stand from Bonnie Hope's hus husband. Then I come over two, again, up on the right side of the stitch. So, I am stepping down one thread and over two from the end of my first stitch. I go over one, two, three, four, and down. And you can see the start of these steps. Again, I come down one thread and over two. One, two, three, four and down, down one, over two, and again, I'm moving to the right, so I'm coming up on the right side of the stitch. So that is four, five, six, now, if I were doing this for real, I would cut off that little tail, but I'm just going to pull it under so I don't have to mess with it with turning over and cutting off in the video. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
down one over two, eight. Okay, so we're coming up to the peak. Now, one of the things that this does is since we're going the whole way, let me go ahead and flip it over on the back. You can see the back stitches are the same length, basically. It has that long padded look on the back like it does on the front. You could, if, if you kind of took the, the shorter route to create the stitch, it, can, it doesn't make the stitches lay as nice. It doesn't give it as much of a padded look. So you're, you're going, because we're going up here and down here and then back up the furthest, the far stitch away, right, the farthest part away, we have that long length in between. But it's also creating a nice stitch because just like with cross stitch, you have that that turn, you're turning and, and the thread is kind of going back the way it came. So it's it has that nice um, opening of the hole. Um, it's hard to describe, but you know, when you're making a cross stitch, you want to have the floss kind of turning back on itself to kind of create that nice shape of the X. In other words, if you, if you, okay, so I do my, my X is like up, down, up, down, if I do another stitch up here and that thread underneath is just going straight up, that X down here, the finish of the X doesn't look as nice. It's the same concept for this. So we are at nine now and we wanna turn back around and start going back up. And for these then, we are moving to the left. So we wanna start on the left, the stitch on the left, and move to the right. Now this is, we still have to make stitch nine, but this is where we make the turn. So I came down on stitch eight over here on the right. For stitch nine, I'm still dropping down one and over two, but for stitch nine, I'm com coming up on the right, or the left side of the stitch. So right there. I still have a little bit of a turn going on underneath the fabric, but it's not as great as when I go up on the right side of the stitch. So stitch nine, I think I just pulled some of the tail up here. One, two, three, four. And now we go to the left. So I come up on the left, so that is stitch nine. eight, seven, again I'm dropping down one and moving back to the left, two, six, five, Four, drop down one, drop over two, three, two, one. And if we've counted everything right, then we should end up on the same line, yay, right, as our first stitch. So there is our first zig of our pattern. So you can see I have a lot of thread left. I'm just gonna pull that up there, and this is what I would do. I would just pull it up through out on the border of my fabric and let that hang out there while I do the next color. Now, if I were doing for this for real, I would continue the brown down for as long as this strand would take me. Okay, so there is the first one. Okay, I had to 
go away for a little bit and recharge my little light that is clip it, clipped onto my phone. So for you, I know it was just a blink of an eye, but for me, it was charge, plug the light in, plug my iPad in, eat some lunch. <laughs> so I am back now and we are going to do another row here so I can show you what it's like to add on a second row. And then we're going to fill in with ecru in the little triangle. So again, I am going to do my little away waist thread. And it doesn't matter really where you put it, just somewhere where it's in the line of where it will get covered up by the stitches. And you know, this is actually longer than I would normally do. That's like a full inch um, to cover the thread and I wouldn't use that much, but that's okay. All right, so again, we are repeating what we have here in the brown. And like I said, once you have that brown row in, everything else gets built off of that and it makes it very easy. Whoops, I just pulled down on my tail. Hold please. All right, I'm just gonna stick it in there. All right, so the first stitch is going right underneath this one right here. It's staying in line because this is the line at the top of this stitch section, of the, of the Florentine stitch section. So again, I am gonna be moving to the right. So I count down four linen threads and come up on the right of the stitch. holding onto that little tail so it doesn't go any place and go down on the left of the stitch count down two linen threads or down one and over two and again down four threads from oops I think I'm down five actually yes I am this is where I said counting is important And so what I found, how I found that is I checked counting down four threads from the bottom of the brown thread. And I was like, wait, that's five linen threads, not four. So there's that one again, down one over two, not three. Check here, one, two, three, four, and down. Continuing to move to the right down one over two we come up on the right side of the stitch down on the left end of the stitch and i think you can see once you get like your eyeball going once you get a feel for how all of this lays out it really does i mean you don't have to you don't have to really count that much you just kind of eyeball it i'm going to scrape that little tail down underneath again and get it out of the way. Um, you know, you kind of get a feel for what it's supposed to look like and you don't have to count too much. Just maybe if you want to verify. You don't have to count the number of stitches because once you get down here to the peak, you know you have to turn around and head back. But as I said, so we are at the peak and this is where we turn the stitches around. So instead of going right to left, we're going left to right because we're heading back over to the left. And I do that on the peak stitch, on the ninth stitch. So instead of coming up over here, four down from the brown thread, I am coming up in the same hole as the brown thread. So this is my ninth stitch. And then we go back up. And this is where I need to count a little more since I don't have anything over on this side 
to keep me in line and I don't want anything over in this side. Remember, I said you don't want to like put in the two ecru rows or the three the three ecru rows and then fill in the yellow. You want to keep this space clear so it's just easier to see where those holes are and where the stitches go. And again, it's not as hard on a lower count fabric, but once you get up into those higher counts, yeah, we need all the help we can get <laughs> in more ways than one. But again, down one over two, come up on the left side. My thread got knotted under there. And like I said, this is a 32 count linen that I'm using. And I think for really nice coverage for floss or even um, for Vicky silks, definitely for the hand dyed fiber silks, I would be using two strands. All right, so there is the last one. And you can see, I mean, it really does flow pretty easily once you get those first rows started. Okay, so again, I have a length of the blue still left, so I'm just gonna pull that up and put it over here out of the way. And now I'm going to get my already threaded A crew one, and we are going to do this triangle in the middle. So this is a little different because you can see right off the bat, right here, I only have two linen threads to cover to go over. These are called compensating stitches when you're working the full stitches in the row and then you're left over on the edge of the design with partial stitches. You have to fill those in somehow. So once again, I am going to just do a little away thread. Now once I get going, I will just flip my work over and tuck the new yarn or the new um, thread underneath previously laid stitches. I, I make sure it's under the same color. I'm not doing that now just because I don't want to, well, these are, this is a new color, but um, yeah, I wanna, don't wanna flip my frame over any more than I have to and disturb the, where I am on the screen basically. All right, so again, I am going to be working down this way, right? So I'm moving over to the right. So my first stitch is going to go into the right side and I'm only doing two because this first brown stitch or the second brown stitch leaves two stitches open that I have to fill in. And again, this is pearl cotton. This is pearl cotton number 12. Just a thread to give you an idea, thick enough that you can see and I get decent coverage on without having to mess with two strands. Okay, so then the next stitch on top of the third brown one, this is going to be a full over four threads stitch. So that goes there. And again, you have that line there that's where it ends. And now we just do the normal down one over two till we get to the bottom. And there's only seven in this row. So that's four. Five. Six. And then the last one, the peak, again, I'm gonna just take a minute here to tug down on this tail, if I can grab it. 
Come on. All right. I'm going to have to flip it okay. So we're down at the bottom here. And this is where we, re where we reverse. Say that five times fast. So instead of doing coming up here over on the right of the stitch and down on the left, we are going to come up over on the left and head back the other way. So that's seven. Five. Sometimes I have to do the two this one, two, three, four. Make sure I'm eyeballing it right. Four. Or you can stick your your needle up next to where you went down or where you came up, I guess, sorry, and count up two. Three. I think my brown thread is getting caught underneath. Three. Two. one full stitch but then you can see once again we have a half stitch there right left over from on top of that second brown one now i handle this a little bit differently in that with the with this portion with filling this little triangle Instead of continuing down, say, the, the row to the next triangle, I just fill in this triangle before I move to the next one. I am a big believer in being as frugal as possible, performing the stitches correctly, even that, if that means using more thread, but being as frugal as possible with my thread within those parameters. So what I do is... I work back and forth to fill in the triangle, but I actually leave the compensating stitches, these half stitches, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't do those yet until I get the middle done. I don't do the ones on this side, the approaching the next triangle side, if you will, um, until I am ready to move to the next triangle. I do fill in these ones on this side, but on this half of the triangle, I don't fill those in until the end. So let me show you what I mean. So I have a half stitch here, and then here on the top of this ecru stitch, let me bring my needle up in there so you can see. Right there, I have another half stitch compensating stitch. So I'm going to leave that too. So I'm moving from this last stitch here, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's seven stitches. I'm going to go back, I'm leaving this one, I'm going to go here next. So to the stitch above the third stitch down of the row I've already completed. Okay, so once again, I am moving towards the right. So that means I bring my needle up on the right side of the stitch. And bring it down on the left side. And so having put this in, stitch in place, you can see this gap here and this gap here that we will fill in on the way back or bef as we finish and are ready to move to the next triangle. So I drop down one and over two, again, coming up on the right and down on the left. 
this row will only have five stitches in it. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now we are back at the peak, as it were, in the middle of the stitch. So I'm going to turn around to head, start heading back up. And instead of going the whole way down to the bottom, to the far right of this stitch, one, two, three, four, I'm going to come up on the left of the stitch. So because I'm heading back to the left, that peak is where I turn it around. And start going left to right. And I don't know whether you noticed there, I just double checked my count on that one by just kind of counting one, two, three, four, counting the linen threads as I'm heading towards the hole that I'm going down into. All right, so here I am at the last full stitch on this side. And as with over on the other side, I have a blank space there above that other ecru stitch that I have to fill in. Now I do fill in the stitches on this side. So what's hap what I'm doing here then is I'm filling this in and leaving these empty spaces. That means when I get to the middle, I will have stitches that I need to stitch to work my way back over here to get to the next triangle to fill in. So it, it makes me feel like I'm not using as much thread, that I'm being more, more careful, more frugal, more just kind of planning out how to do the stitches so that I'm not wasting a bunch of thread underneath. All right, so now I'm gonna be heading back down on the next row going down, and again, heading to the right. There's a little half stitch there that I have to fill in, and I do do them on this side because I'm not coming back to fill those in to get to the next triangle. I am filling them in to get to this triangle. So there is that one. This row only has three stitches going down. So there was a half one. This is a whole one that again goes up to the, to the edge of this section. One, two, and again, I've reached the peak here. So I'm turning around and instead of bringing up in the right again side of that stitch, I'm coming up in the left side of the stitch there in the middle. So one, two, three, four, Double checking my count. Pulling my thread through the needle a little bit. Okay, and there's my third one. One, two, three, four. Just counting to be sure I'm in the right place. There's my third one. And again, another half stitch there waiting for me to fill in. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I ate lunch, so now I'm all flummy. So again, I just have this little bit in the middle to fill in. So there is a compensating stitch here, a half stitch, and then a full stitch and a half stitch. So I am going to jump over, and this is where, since we're not really moving either to the right or the left at this point, right? We just have some stitches right along that, that row there to do. I'm just going to come up in the empty part of the stitch, the clean hole as it were, that's what I like to call it, and then down in the dirty hole. So that's the last full stitch I have. Whoops, look, do you see that? Can you see? I don't know whether you can see where I put that stitch. I should have 
come up and let me get my needle here in the right place. Ah, next one over. I'm not getting it up in the right place. I should have come up in that hole right there. So I am only over three linen threads instead of two. Let me see if I can get this out without snagging the other thread. No, of course not. So that means I have to unthread the needle. All right. All right, come on, get in the right hole. There we go. All right, so this is the last full stitch. Now I'm going to fill in that half stitch, that half stitch, that half stitch, that half stitch, that half stitch. And I will be over where I need to be to do the next triangle. So that's that. Now I'm going to take this thread and just anchor it over here out of the way. And again, you can do that, the ecru triangles, anytime after you get that first brown line in. I have a tendency to get more of the, the zigzags done and then come back and fill in a bunch of the triangles on both sides. And again, a separate strand for each one. And then if I have extra, I park it over here. Now, as I did mention, you wanna be careful that you, if you're working the border down and you've done some of this, say you've done a, a chunk of this and then you're working more of the border down, Keep aware of where those things are. It is not the end of the world if you don't. But again, I've made the mistakes for you. Let me find it. Yes, this is the back. You can see the back of that Florentine is very much like the front. Not exactly. But where is it? Let me see. Well, that's interesting. I guess I took it out. There were some of the, um, two of the ecru threads that I had forgotten I had had draped over on the edge and got caught when I was, and so I was working the border down here somewhere and, and just basically forgot that they were there, even though, you know, you can see them. <laughs> it's not like you can't see them, but I was working merrily along on the border. You know, I didn't have to look at the, the uh, chart for anything because it's just a repeat over and over. And um, I sewed those threads on the back into the border not a big deal and obviously I figured out how to get them out without ruining it but um I think I, I originally just cut them off I don't remember but anyways it happens it's not the end of the world and this is the end result this beautiful border all along 
what I think is an absolutely stunning sampler. So I hope you found that useful. I hope that that answers all the questions you might have about how to work this stitch. If there is anything that you are unclear on, that you feel that um, I didn't show well enough or that I missed something, please don't hesitate to ask and I can always do another video or if I can answer with the, the answer with words, I will, but I can always do another video. I really, really want you to not be intimidated by this at all. It is not hard once you get the flow of it and I hope watching this video you could see that it's not hard. Um, and certainly once you do just a few repeats, you've, you've got it. If for some reason you don't come up on the right and down on the left when you're moving to the right or don't come, you know, a vice versa, that is not the end of the world either. You do not even have to take it out. <laughs> it's not a big deal. It does just make your stitches lay the, uh, just a little bit neater. There are plenty of places in here where I forgot, where I was just like, my brain was off doing something else and my hands were doing their own thing. It's like, like, wait a second, that's not right. <laughs> and it's actually not that it's not right. It's just not the best practices. So anyway, again, have any questions, let me know. I hope you learn from this. I hope this helps you get total enjoyment out of this stitch. Until next time, guys, you guys take care of yourselves. Have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.